bless you. We thank you. We praise your name. We adore you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand as you take your seat. Alright, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 6. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 6. Now Peter and John went up to, together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the, being the ninth hour. And a certain man named from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave it unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. I want to share on the eight laws of greatness. The eight laws. And we're going to take a study and a extraction from the six verses we just read. The eight laws of greatness. God, we must be very careful in this kingdom because in the kingdom of God, it's not about duration, it's about donation. Someone can be a Christian for 50 years, 30 years, and somebody comes in just two, three years ago by reason of his zeal and his commitment and his dedication and his zest in his following God. You see him have accelerations. Among all the disciples of Jesus that were with Jesus physically, literally, one-on-one, -on -one, there were several people that were not with Jesus. They never saw Jesus as in on close proximity, meeting him very closely. They knew him in the flesh, but they didn't know him as the Son of God. He wasn't revealed to them as the Son of God. Like Paul, for example. Paul said, we, we know no man after the flesh. Because he knew Jesus in the flesh. When Paul, when Jesus was around as a prophet of God, as a son of God, as the only begotten son of God, Paul knew. But Paul just knew him as one Christ, one person who calls himself Christ. As a matter of fact, in the days of Jesus, there were people that never believed in Jesus and there were people around him. His own blood brother, the blood brothers of Jesus never believed in Jesus. If you read John chapter 7, stand from verse 1. Not only did they not believe in him, they ridiculed him. After this thing, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in the Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jew feast of Tabernacle was at hand. Listen to this. Listen to this. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that the disciples might see the work which thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. He himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. If you are powerful, let the world see you. For, can we read this verse 5 together? Want to go. For neither did his brethren believe in him. His own brothers. Okay, let's take that scripture from the message translation. From verse 1 again. John 5 and John 7. His brothers... No, no, go back to verse 1. Later, Jesus was going about his business in, in Galilee. He didn't want to travel in Judea because the Jews were looking for a chance to kill him. Now, people want to kill him. His brothers were pushing him to the hands of the killers. It was near time of Tabernacles, a feast observed annually by the Jews. 
His brother said to him, why don't you live here and go up to the feast so your disciples can, can get a good look at the works you do. No one in, who intends to be publicly known does everything behind the scene. For if you are serious about what you are doing, come out into the open and show the world. Verse 5. For his brothers were pushing him like this because they didn't believe in him and Jesus was they see, Jesus operated on the principles the principle Jesus operated in was that those that believed in him he related with those that didn't believe in him he didn't relate with do you understand that? how? when Jesus was preaching one time the Bible says they came to him and said thy mother and thy brother seek to see thee did he see them? did he see them? no he said who are my mothers and my brothers? these ones here that do the will of God that listens to my word so in other words the principal work of Jesus was you believe in me I relate to you don't believe in me I stay far from you why? because you cannot be productive hanging around those that don't believe in you okay so what I'm saying not sure Paul never saw related with him by revelation Paul only had an encounter in Acts chapter 9 with him but Paul wrote to third of the, of, of the New Testament why? because of donation is impact and the seriousness now that's even going too far the gospel the four gospels are matthew matthew mark luke and john matthew was a disciple mark was a disciple luke was not all right luke was not john was but luke was not luke was a doctor but luke was one who hung around but if you see the gospel of Luke it is more detailed it has 24 chapters it's more details why? because there are certain people that gave themselves to research and to study every one of us in life God has called us to be great when he called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 he made him know that he will make him a great nation a great nation People saw in Abraham as an individual, but God was seen in him a nation. In Genesis 15, verse 1, he said, I'm thy sheep and thy exceeding great reward. Great reward. In Psalm 71, 21, he said, Thou shalt increase my greatness and shall comfort me on every side. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me so god wants us to be great the man called isaac in genesis 26 from verse 13 he said the man was great the man went forward he works great he went forward and he grew until he became so he works great he went forward he grew became so greatness is in levels greatness is in phases greatness is in dimension what is greatness greatness is living your dreams to the fullest it's not just achieving your dreams it's living your dreams there's a difference between achieving your dreams and living your dreams when you when you achieve your dreams it's as though you have won a trophy when you live your dreams is is the level where success becomes a lifestyle where others what others see and they applaud and they are screaming and they are getting accolades to you it has become a lifestyle living your dreams not just achieving your dreams living your dreams to the fullest Greatness is rising to the apex of your vision. The apex of your vision. Have you seen a leaf? Do you know leaf? Leaf, right? Hello? You know leaf. You know that tip of the leaf? It's called the apex. The tip of the leaf. So living your life and living, rising to the apex of your vision. Maximization of potential to his zenith that is greatness all that god has put inside you all your talent all your dreams god wants every one of us to maximize it greatness is dying empty dying what dying what what does it mean to die empty it means that every dream in your heart every pursuit every vision every expectation is fully achieved you live in this world without any dream. All the dreams are achieved. All the pursuits in life are all accomplished. That is what it means to die empty. 
And God wants everyone to die empty. Not going to the grave with your dreams. Not going to the grave with all your aspirations. That's what greatness is all about. Fulfilling purpose and living without regrets. Fulfilling purpose and living without regrets. Fulfilling purpose. And so God wants you to be great in a nutshell. God wants you to experience a level, a dimension of greatness. God wants you to experience a dimension of expansion. From the place where we read, we see a man who was a practical nobody. How God lifted him, picked him up, and God announced him. The man became someone who caused a stir. His miracle was so announced that if you read Acts chapter 4, which was the chapter after Acts chapter 3, they arrested Peter and John. Why? Because of the miracles that manifest man's life. They arrested them and that moved them to a place of prayer. That man in Acts chapter 3 was a dimension, was a shift in the church. Because in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But that man's healing made them arrested. And when they were arrested, they prayed again. This time they were not just baptized, they were filled. There's the first dimension of being baptized and there's the second dimension of being filled. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 29 and they say, Lord, behold, they are threatened. Grant thy servant with all boldness that in the name of the Holy Child, as we speak your word, that in the name of the Holy Child Jesus, that signs and wonders may be done. Acts chapter 4, 29 and 30. So they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So that manifestation of the miracles in that man's life made them pray and ushered them to another dimension. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So meaning... That man was a great man. You can never disrespect anything that makes you pray. Don't disrespect anything that makes you pray. That nightmare that, makes you, that made you fast deserves some respect. There are so many people today slap them, kick them, they will never wake up. But when God wants them to wake up, a nightmare is permitted. They jump and declare a three-day fast. Salute the nightmare. It deserves <laughs> deserve some respect. Let me tell you how God works. Now, there are some people who, they, something must happen. There must be some sound. There must be something. There must be some sound. You know, that just, they just hear some nasty sound. No inspiration, no message of on midnight prayer can provoke them to wake up at night. But if they hear something, they are sealing. There's no, no prophecy. No message on midnight teaching. Tell them about principality. Tell them about powers. Tell them about strong men. Spiritual wickedness, they're looking at you. You know. But as soon as they're at home, what you are saying is verbal. Now what they are seeing is physical manifestation of principalities. And the air is sounding, boom. Don't tell them to pray. You will, if I, you will stop them from praying. They will jump up and they will start binding. They will start praying. There are people that are very quiet. They don't sing in church. They don't sing. They don't sing. If you have dancing, they don't dance. They are just, you know, there are people that are indifferent. When they come to the house of God, they are just indifferent. They are just like that. And they feel they are trying to get themselves together. No, that's not. You are religious. That's a religious demon. You are, that's a demon. That thing in you is a demon. When others are dancing, they are excited. Just here on one spot, you are trying to be indifferent. No, you are not indifferent. It's a demon. And God help anybody that's sitting around you because such demons are contagious. You know, they, they can enter the person. Once you are standing around anybody who is just indifferent, please change. When you come to church, don't just sit. Look around before you sit. Are you following me? If there's nobody, if the people around you don't seem excited, change it because you will know when you start behaving like them because you shout too much. This one is not shouting. You start feeling you have a problem. Are you following what I'm saying? So God made this manifestation that happened here, spurred them to pray. All of them had to start praying. But we are going to see certain characteristics and certain elements and, and uh, 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 strategies that the Lord used in, in configuring that chapter, Acts 3, 1, not 1, 6, up to the end. How did God put that message together, delivered it to us? Delivered it to us so that we can learn. It's very important. The law of greatness, the first law of greatness we see that the Bible says Peter and John. 
Peter and John. The first law of greatness is the law of agreement. The law of agreement. The law of agreement. The best thing that God can do for you is to bring in a godly person into your life. Godly people are gifts of God. A helper is not necessarily one that walks into your life to give you money. A helper is one that walks into your life to stand you. It might be prayer. It might be fasting. It might just be that word of comfort. It might be that word of encouragement. There are times that all you just want to hear is somebody who tells you you can make it. There are times all you just want to hear is somebody who tells you you can succeed. When people are crying at times, when people are going through pain and they want to express their pain, sometimes you need to just let them express it. Sometimes just listen to them. Even if they are not making sense to you, let them just say something. The greatest of men, the strongest of men, still have weak moments. Jesus, the son of God, the king of kings, yet Jesus wept. The most high God, the strongest of men, still have their weak moments. The law of agreement. The law of agreement. They went up together. In the law of agreement, the first thing you must, you must know is that for God, for you to operate the law of agreement, number one, God must connect you to the right people. The right people. The right people. The right people. Amos must read three. He said, can two work together except they agree? There cannot be agreement unless there's a right association. Unless there's a right association. You must get the right association. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, if you read from verse 1 to verse 6, he said, but the Bible says one time the people of the, of, of the earth got to the place called Shana. They had one speech, they had one language. And they had a dream, their dream that was, <laughs> was that they were going to build a tower towards heaven. They were going to raise a building. They will lay the foundation on earth and they will build it and build it and build it and build it and build it until it gets to heaven. So that if anybody is angry, you just take a lift, you go and meet God, you report, you come back. If you're angry with God, you just go to heaven, just take an elevator, complain, 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 and come back. So that was, look at the kind of dream people had. Just to reach heaven. That is, that is spiritual, spiritual sea finish. <laughs> spiritual sea finish. That somebody, people are, I mean, your, your own dream now is to build a tower that will get to heaven, that will just meet God. So anytime you are praying, God is not answering. You just you pray to the you pray to no God, you just walk straight. Say, come, what's going on? <laughs> That's see finish. This respect of the eyes. So God said to them, He said, the people, if you study your Bible, he didn't say the people are one. He said the people is one. The people is one. Their bond was so strong. The Lord said, Behold, the Lord said the people is one, and they have one language. Their bond was so strong. They are born. So God has to bring in the right person. The right person into your life. Law of agreement. Peter and John. It was in Peter and James. Now if you see Peter and John. Peter and John is a definition of two classes of people. That worked with Jesus. Peter was somebody who loved Jesus. John was somebody Jesus loved. Peter was somebody who loved Jesus. John was somebody Jesus loved. So you need it in your life. You need a God lover. What qualifies any person to associate with you must be somebody who is a lover of God. So you need the right association into your life. If you must have someone to agree with you, the person must first be the right person. In the law of agreement, you must understand the second thing about the law of agreement is that when God brings people into your life, stop being parasitic. Don't be, be, don't be a parasite. Stop looking for all you can get from people. Think of what you can put into their life. You people say that person, I know since I knew him, don't mind him. It's one naira. He has not given me. What happened to your own one naira? Say, if see that one, he has not given me anything. What have you given him? You can never have a genuine relationship with an entitlement mentality. Any relationship you get into, maybe God gives you somebody in your office, God gives you somebody in your family, God gives you somebody in church who is connected to you, praying with you, and you must always think of what can you bring 
into it. Nothing sustains relationship like when there's a contribution from you. You can sustain that relationship. If God brings somebody into your life and God gives you maybe a man uh, uh, who God has blessed so much, it's so funny that God has blessed certain people and God Almighty knows you don't qualify for that. God bring them into your hand cheaply. But there's something you must know. God can give you a helper but God will not keep the helper for you. It's your responsibility to keep the helper. I've always taught us when somebody's in your life and the person is blessing you so much money and you are going to the office, carry a gift. Have I taught you that? Yes, carry a gift. Let something come from you. Without a go is birthday. No, have birthday. There are things you call very small, but they mean a lot to people. A week to the birthday, send her a message. Send him a message. You have been a blessing to my life. As we, as we count down to your birthday, I know God is going to do for you the things you cannot do for yourself. All of those things. Because once a person gets to a level, he has so many parasites around him. Your attitude and your attribute is what makes you stand out. Okay, let me say this to you. When you contribute to a relationship, you are no more a dependent. You have become a colleague. When you contribute to a relationship, you are no more a dependent. Even if it's anchored, never work to a helper empty-handed. Are you listening? Somebody's paying your school fees. Somebody's paying your rent and you are say chap and you are going to the person's place you want to carry against another fresh list and another fresh list that he didn't know before are you following me you must why sometimes when people ask you what do you how much is this how much is that they are aware they are trying to test your sincerity they're trying to give you an open check to see your reaction so stop living the mentality thinking you are smart successful people are smarter than you that's how they got to the top. They are smarter than you. So you are trying to be smart. You must know because there are a lot of us who have God has brought people into our lives, but we cannot keep them. And now we are praying. No, God never leaves himself without a witness. Don't be parasitic. Don't be parasitic. Amen. Amen. That's one of the biggest problems we have in Nigeria. Every graduate is for job not knowing there's a job in every graduate and we had somebody who calls who is our president who just told all the graduates in nigeria that there are no jobs he just told us told everybody say if you go to school now just know you are going to school for yourself there are no jobs that's what the president of the federal republic of your country that's what he said that there are no jobs so how, so going to school now, you are going to school now because you have a job inside of you. How could you even say that? Are you following what I'm saying? Say there are no jobs. He said jobs. <laughs> American president was excited in the month of May. I said despite the pandemic, they got 565,000 new jobs. He was excited in the month of May that he got new jobs despite the COVID pandemic. And I said, everywhere is full. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, so there's a job inside you. There's something inside you. I said, there's a job inside you. Amen. Amen. I said, there's a job inside you. Mm. So you, you, don't, you are not paras parasitic Number three If you must have a good relationship And get into agreement with the right person You must be going on the same destination You must be going on the same destination As selfish as this appears As selfish as this appears Anyone that is not a believer Should not be on the same journey with you Destiny journey I mean Because your languages are different You are from two different kingdoms Anyone that is not a believer, anyone that does not have the lordship of Christ in his or her life. Mm. Amen. I said amen. amen. Agreement. Peter and John. Peter and John. Finally, to make an agreement work, you must understand the place of loyalty. Don't betray your friend. When God gives you a friend, don't betray. It's better your friend betrays you 
don't betray you have a classmate who is a friend of yours you have a roommate who is a friend of yours you have somebody who god has put in your life and the person is so close to you and you know so much about the person's family even in the midst of anger there are things that should not come out of your mouth do you know in war when soldiers fight war children and wives are no-go areas when they fight war children and a man who understands the art of war when he's coming for a colleague and he gets to the house he misses his children, misses his wife. He walks away. Are you following what I'm talking about? Because they know in the act of war, family is a no-go area. We live, now we live in a generation when two people can have issues and they start throwing infectives on their families. Everything your friend told you before he finished telling you it was on the streets. You are not a good friend. And you must understand something. You must understand something. When, when you are loyal you attract the right people and you keep them i'm not saying be loyal to a cult be loyal to a, a believer be loyal to a friend there are going to be issues anytime there's a problem between you and a friend it's not an attack it is a test of that relationship every relationship will be tested the maturity that both of you have to be able to handle that test is what determines the next level of that relationship. You're upset, you're angry, and everything you knew about your colleague in the office, how one time he cried out to you and said the wife did this, the husband did this, in the midst of pain, you start pouring them out, you just start talking, and you see all kinds of things. When you are done, you have not made a fool of that person, you have made a fool of yourself. Sometimes the things we do to people is not a reflection of what they are, it's a reflection of who we are. Whenever you are listening to someone, whenever you are listening, someone is listening to you rather, speaking about people, there are different things that goes on in the, in the heart of a wise person. Number one, it puts a limit. But if you could be doing this to somebody, you can do it to him. Are you following me? If you sell your brother, even the buyers won't trust you. If you sell your brother, even the buyers won't trust you. There are many people that joined a part of this country that was running for leadership, running for leadership. They betrayed the South. They betrayed the East. Nigeria is one, please. North, East, West, and South. But there are certain pe as people from an extraction. They betrayed this part of the country supported a certain part of that of the country and brought them into leadership and i said to them i said do you think these people will trust you you think they will say oh, no they don't know what we did for them i said very soon you understand as i speak to you now they fence all of them and they don't give them access anymore normally they walk into places before and they open the door for them now they walk they feel from they are waiting i said nobody will trust you when you sold your brother if someone you have ties with someone that has been a blessing in your life you can easily give out that person you are going to do that to me who is a stranger to you it doesn't make sense. Are you following what I'm talking about? Someone goes to the same church with you, goes everywhere with you, and you are busy reporting a fellow member to an unbeliever who doesn't know God. It shows how, number one, immature you are. Number one, something is wrong with your brain. Because if you are a thinker, if you are wise, the world should report their issues to the church. Not the church report issues to the world. Hello? So right now, they garaged all of them. They quarantined them. No access. And I said to them, when you guys start fighting yourself very soon, I said, I don't know who started. I'll be taking ice cream and popcorn with my leg crossed. As it because I said to you, you do not sell your brother. Your brother is your brother. Your sister is your sister. No matter what they have done, your sister is family. Your brother is family. Glory to God. Number two, love, greatness is timing. Timing. The Bible says, verse, verse two, that they went there to pray in the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. You must understand the place of timing. Everyone in life has got time 
attached to his day of rising. Everyone. God does not bless people. <laughs> God does not bless people. God does not give people money. God does not give people cars. God does not give people houses. It is time and chance that happens to people. Time and chance. Ecclesiastes 9 11. The race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong, nor riches to the men of skill, nor bread to men of understanding. But time and chance. What does that mean? How you are able to use opportunity and understand the place of time and chance. When people become great, it's because they were smart to maximize time and smart to catch in on opportunities. Time and chance. There's a part of this country today. There are a people of chance. There are people of chance. It's an extraction from this country. You see them everywhere you go. They walk into a location. They understand what is happening there. They understand an opportunity to make money. They start a business. If they are in this place now, and there's a riot here now. People are fighting. There's a riot. You see them, they'll come. They'll carry egg and carry water. And these people are fighting, they must chop. Are you following me? What, what are they doing? Chance, 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 chance. They see every opportunity, they cash into it. Chance is, an, is, is, the, is the ability to cash in on opportunities. God will bring opportunities your way, but sometimes opportunities come dressed in rags. That if you are not sensitive, you miss the opportunities. People that become wealthy today are wealthy because of opportunities. They look around. Great men don't do great things. They do little things. But how did they get the success? They did it consistently with opportunity. So you must understand the place of opportunity. Timing. The two major errors of timing that you must be very careful. Is you must not move beyond your time. And you must not stay back when is your time. You must not move before your time. And you must not hold back when is your time. So you need spiritual sensitivity to handle these two dimensions. You need spiritual sensitivity to know when is your time. And you need more sensitivity to know when it is not your time. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, Be not slothful in business, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Inherit the, the promise. Through faith. Many of us have known about the faith, but we have not known about the patience. Time! If you understand the place of time, you'll be fruitful. When a man adds time into prayer, the man is fruitful. The Bible says the, the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. In the theology of numerology, we know what nine means. Nine means fruitfulness. The hour of prayer is the hour of fruitfulness. Any man that understands the place of prayer must understand how to maximize it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Time is what happens to people. Time. Your beauty is in timing. Ecclesiastes 3 11 says, It makes everything beautiful in his own time. Psalm 102, verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Why God has promised to give you a good home, God has promised to give you a good life, God has promised to give you a good husband, give you a good wife, give you a good family. While you are waiting for that promise, what do you do? In a restaurant, what do waiters do? What do waiters do? You are waiting for God to give you and fulfill the promise. You are waiting. So what do you do? You serve. Waiters serve. You start serving. You start following him. You start obeying him. You start walking the light of his word. John chapter 2, from 1 to 3 to 4 to 5. The Bible says all of a sudden there was no wine in the marriage of Galilee. There was no wine. They ran out of wine or somebody stole the wine. Somebody stole the wine. Because there's no way the young man will get that crowd and Jesus was a guest and will not bring wine. But as all of them were seated, all of a sudden they discover there was no wine. Somebody said, since I can't stop the celebration, I will cause an embarrassment. Somebody kidnapped the wine. Because you cannot be hosting Jesus and don't have a wine. And the Bible says the guy was already seated. He said, they have no wine. And went to the mother of Jesus. And the mother of Jesus came to Jesus and said to Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus said, my hour is not yet come. The mother laughed. And turned to them and said, please, that thing he said, if you follow that thing, you are going to die here without wine. Any 
anything is said unto you, do it. How do you merge the two together? My hour is not yet come. Anything is said unto you, do it. What is that? My hour is not yet come. Whatever is said unto you, do it. What Jesus was saying, what the mother of Jesus was saying, that if you can do what he says to you, his hour will come. His hour will come. God said, I'm watching. You say, Lord, give me a miracle. God said, what is it? What have I got to do with you? Obey. There's an instruction to obey to trigger the heaven. There's an instruction. And that's why I told you, I said, I told you when I was teaching, I said, the six water pots that were there, they, there was already water there. There was water in those pots. There was already water. Jesus only said, fill it to the brim. Make it full. Fill the water pot and they fill them to where? Brim. There was water. And I told you what the water was meant for. In those days, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were men that believed in the external regulations. Their form of righteousness was external. When they are coming to the temple, they wear long robe. That was the kind of thing the Pharisees do. They wear long robe to show that they are holy. We see all kinds of people like that now. We see them like that. They believe in the, in the external kind of holiness. Okay? They believe in the standards. That's why any of them that die now, that die, and go and say they went to heaven. The first thing they'll come back and tell us that God said, don't wear your ring. So sometimes the heaven, they, are, they always die and go to. I keep wondering if it's a fashion industry that always spends time with emphasis on earring and nails and hair. Now, you must understand, if it's revealed to you personally that the Lord said don't do this, it's a personal revelation. It's not a general revelation. So, these people, what they do when entering anywhere, the temple, the celebration, there are pots of water. What they do, they wash their hand. Wash their face in that water. Wash everything because they want to be pure. They are understanding of purities that you must wash. So they wash in that water. So imagine a hundred people walk in and have washed their face into six pots. So there was water there. That was the pot that Jesus said, fill. Look at the Bible. The Bible says there were six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews. To purify, wash themselves. It was that water Jesus said, fill to the brim. What I expected Jesus, Jesus to do was to say, pour out the dirty water first. No, he said that one that is dirty, fill it to the brim. That is why when the governor drank it, the Bible says the governor did not know where he came from. Because he knew he wouldn't drink it. Look at that. Verse, look at that. Verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not, but the servant that drew the water knew. Because if that man had known that it was that dirty water, that is the God we serve. When he wants to make your life sweet in the midst of your stain, in the midst of your shame, in the midst of your rejection, in the midst of your abandonment, when men feel there's nothing good coming out of your life, you are like that pot that everybody has washed their hands on, everybody has ridiculed, everybody has abandoned, they have called you names, they thought nothing good would come out of your life. God does not destroy you. He builds on that rejection, he builds on that pain, he builds on that embarrassment, and he gives it to your generation. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. That's the God we serve. It builds on the rejection. It builds on the pain. It builds on that name. God does not pick the best. God picks the worst. Makes them the best and gives them to their generation. God is a farmer, but God is better than the farmers in the world. The farmer in the world, they see a good seed, they plant it. They see a bad seed, they throw it away. God sees a good seed, he plants it. He sees a bad seed, he makes it good and plants it. He does not throw it away. Someone said to me, he said, look at this person, look at that person, two days ago or yesterday. He said, look at this, look at this, look at that, look at that, look at that. What are you doing about them? Why don't you do this and do that? I said, listen to me, everyone you see today walking with Jesus is a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Jesus looked at them and said, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. He! So everyone is a work in progress. Men are imperfect. That's no more in news. For men to remain imperfect, that's the news. To remain imperfect, that's the news. The place of timing. The place of timing. Number three. The Bible still says in verse two. He said they brought that man daily 
So the gates are beautiful. Number three, routine. Your routine. Your success or failure can be traced from your daily routine. That thing you do daily is what will reveal if you succeed or fail. Am I communicating right now? Am I communicating right now? That thing you do daily is what will determine and reveal if you succeed or fail. So your success is your daily routine. What you do daily determines if you succeed or fail. Somebody say, I hear you. Somebody say, I hear you. Somebody say, I hear you. Amen. You will not fail. I say, you will not fail. You will not fail. In the name of Jesus. I wrote something, some okay, my other note. There was something I wrote yesterday. I was just meditating. And I wrote a little summary about life. There are times in life whatever you are today, the seed was sown yesterday. Hello? But we have the generation where people do not even understand that. The seed was sown yesterday. Your today is your yesterday amplified. Your daily routine. What is that thing that takes your time a day? Do you know in this last exam, jam, is it jam? That came out. 86% failures. Only 14%. Bad. It has never been this bad. Because I'm talking to you now. Some are writing the like exam. But as I'm talking to you, rather than read their book, they'll be watching Big Brother. That's the truth. What do they do? Anything they want, they Google. Anything they want, they Google. Anything they want, they go on the internet. They spend more time on that than reading their books. They spend more time on that by get, than getting knowledge. So imagine the person who goes into class and they gives him an exam, a, 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 a question. He's thinking of Big Brother. Because that's, that's his daily routine. Am I communicating right now? That's his daily routine. Check people that know the word of God. It's their daily lifestyle. So it has become a part of them. Check those who pray. Whatever result you are seeing now. Daily routine. They brought in daily. Be consistent. It's your faithfulness and your consistency that produces your greatness. Hoping for the best. Don't give up too soon when you are not seeing what you expect. Don't give up too soon when you are not seeing what you are expecting. You are not seeing what you are looking for. Don't give up too soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You keep pushing. You keep... Okay, look at this. Just imagine Jesus carrying the cross. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the Lord, carried the cross. He got to a point. He said, I'm tired. I'm not doing it again. Rubbish. People I created, man I created, spitting on me, you. It, uh, I'm dropping the cross. I'm tired of the cross. I'm not carrying the cross no more. My father has abandoned me. You know, Jesus was so powerful. He was the only one on earth who was 100% God, 100% man. That's why it's called Christology. He was a hundred percent God. He had capacity to look at you and say, Be blind, you'll be blind. You know, if I had the powers that Jesus had, ah. I'll just be in my room, just some some leaders. All those people, all those headsmen, all of them that are killing people in Benue and in Kaduna and all. I'll just see some, I'll just command all of them, all of them to gather together in one hall. Big hall. Call the X-Men from, from Kaduna, from Kanu, from Bauchi, from Ben, all of them. Just command them to enter one hall. And just command the doors to be locked. Bang, bang. And just set the all on fire. Everybody died. Then we can rest. Are you following what I'm saying? 
all those who are stealing Nigerian commonwealth, stealing our money and the rest, just command all of them, say all of you, straight to River Benue, enter. If I had that power, you know, but Jesus, they were killed on the cross. He had power, yet he hung on the cross. Man spat on him. Man ridiculed him. You know why? He saw the glory. The reason many of you are giving up today is because you can't see tomorrow. If you see tomorrow, there are things that will happen to you today, you will collect it gladly because it is part of your testimony. So that when God lifts you tomorrow, that your friend that abandoned you will be in your chapter 2 of your book. When God lifts you tomorrow, that person who spoke against you will be in chapter 3. You say, I had a friend who are going to the same church. He ridiculed me. He spoke against me. He ran me down. Say, I watch the story in the next chapter all of the battles in your life they are working out for your good for the path of the just is like a shining light that shined more and more onto a perfect day lift up your hands and shout hallelujah hallelujah your daily routine what is that thing that you do now excitingly, joyfully? I never knew that honor would come for preaching the gospel. I never knew. I just love preaching the gospel. I never knew preaching the gospel would bring honor. I never knew. It's like David. When David was killing lion, killing bear, he was doing it free of charge. He never knew a time would come that for him to kill Goliath, they have to pay him. What is that thing you enjoy doing without pay? Keep doing it. A time is going to come. Do you like to cook? You cook. Everybody is licking their fingers. Keep cooking. A time is going to come that the kind of restaurant you are going to have, people have to pay. Keep doing what you are doing. You are making people's head. Get used to it. Get Master that act. A time will come, God will take you to a place where they need to pay for your services. I never knew there could be honor. I never knew there could be honor. I never knew there could, I never knew there could be honor. I never knew you can come out and enjoy common honor by preaching the gospel. I never knew. I just loved it. I've told you the first place I went, the first major, I was preaching several places, the first major place I went to preach, that was a big program. They gave me an offering. What was the offering? A nylon of vegetables. Pumpkin. You know pumpkin? Pumpkin leaf. They gave me. That was my offering. And I took the, the offering. And as I entered the vehicle, before I got to my destination, the vegetable melt. The second offering I collected was in Benin. I went to preach and all, all the leaders gathered to give me the offering. They wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it. And they say it was long. I didn't know what it was. They gave it to me. I took it. I was excited. I went back. I opened, 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 opened. When I opened it finally, it was a bottle of Fanta. <laughs> I was excited. Honestly, I was excited. I was happy. I will go and preach in place in camp meeting. Where will I stay? Don't let me sleep in the primary school. That's where everybody is sleeping. But the only benefit of my own primary school is that I'm the one who has two benches. Everybody is one, one bench. As a guest speaker, two bench. Two bench and three locker around the bench so that nobody will disturb the VIP. I was enjoying it. I was excited, happy. But it's so funny today that when people go to program, they are selecting food. I've not eaten. Someone went with went into a program, was complaining to me, say, Papa, they have not brought food. Me, the guest speaker, they have not brought food. Say me to you, they have not brought food for me. I'm not here for food, I'm here for the gospel. Today it has changed. People now do things for reward. You send somebody on errand, he, he gives you the delivery. He says, Sister, I'm going. Say, go now. Eh. I'm going now. Go. Eh. I should go. Say yes. I mean, I want to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a generation that has no longevity. When success is involved, why? Because everybody wants a reward. When Daniel was praying for 21 days, it got to a point Daniel was persistent in praying. Persistent in praying. And the result came. What is your daily routine? Keep doing it. Are you a, a, a footballer? Keep going to the field. Even when there are no teams looking for you. Are you, are you a, a sportsman? Keep going to the gym. Are you a singer? Just keep singing. Keep singing. A powerful gospel artist today who is one of the most celebrated around the world. She was with us recently. 
She's been in the music industry now for 34 years. Her first six, seven albums, nobody heard about it. The first 10 years was silent. Nobody heard anything. To her, those are the best of songs. Nobody heard anything. But today, up to what, even in 2021 now, a song, 141 million views, streamed 141 million. In 2021, it was still the best. What is God doing? It's not necessarily that song. The song is powerful. It's not necessarily that song. It's the years of silence that God is rewarding. Many of us, have, we, we don't have that capacity to be faithful for long. For what? For what? For what? It's not working. It's not working. I beg, I beg, I beg. That mentality, that mentality, that give up mentality, you cannot, you, you end up an average person. Because you, you don't have the capacity to hold on for too long. Am I communicating? You don't have the capacity to hold on for too long. There'll be times of rejection. There'll be times of pain. But when you know what you want, you get an instruction from God. The first time I came to this land, when God showed me this land, the first time I came to this land, it was owls. O W L. You know owl? Owls not an animal you see easily. That's what I saw on this land with their big eyes looking at me. And I asked the Lord, Lord, is this the place or should I expect another? And the Lord said, This is the land. And I went to ask somebody. I just got in married. I was like two years in marriage. I went to ask somebody about this land. And the person called me to a corner. I said, sit down. Do you want to die? I said, why? He said, you just married a very fine woman and you want to just leave her like that? I said, I'm asking you about land. You're talking about die. What is die? What has it got to do with land? And he started telling me the dispute. That this land where we are in now has been a dispute land between two communities. Awochi and Uzare. Some of you from this area know what I'm talking about. It has been a dispute land. They avoid it. Nobody goes there. And I said to the person, I said, it is somebody that settles quarry. I came to settle the quarry. He said, I'm taking the land. If I, when I went down to Benin, I said, I want that land. Everybody in the ministry of land started laughing. Which land? Rondo! For your own good. I went back to the Lord. The Lord said, that's where I showed you. He said, go there and pray. I saw it. So whatever battle I was seeing now, I'd see where I was going. Am I communicating right now? When I got to town, the Holy Ghost said to me, there are altars in this land. Go around the land for 40 days. I went around the land for 40 days. Every cranny, everywhere I was going, all the extensions. I will move from what's about down to Adley on foot. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Different extensions. Went down to Nicole Barak. Went down to Omeme River. Walked down, anointed the river. Was moving around in the midst of fasting for 40 days. And on the 40th day, the Lord said, stand at the AP junction. I stood there. I poured the oil. And God said, shout, the land is free. I shouted, the land is free. So if you come to town as a young pastor, if you come to town as a young pastor, and the first person you are target is Apostle Suleiman. Say, Apostle, look, at you don't know what I did. You don't know what I did. Hallelujah. Number four. Is it number four now? Four? Number four. Excellence. Excellence is a key to greatness. The Bible says that we are at the beautiful gate. Beautiful gate. Beautiful gate. A gate does not beautify itself. People beautify the gate. I mean the people around the gate are people of excellence. They beautify the gate. You must understand the place of excellence in achieving greatness. It was a built gate. Excellence is doing a common thing in a common way. Somebody can be wearing a common dress, but it's well done and it's neat. There are people today, one of our biggest problems is that there's no excellence in our life. There's this mediocrity that we carry. No excellence. From your speech, people can depict excellence. Excellence. This Daniel, this Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, verse 3. This Daniel was preferred above the others because an excellent spirit dwells in him. Excellent spirits. Proverbs 17, verse 7 talks about an excellent speech does not become of a fool. Excellent speech becoming not a fool. Much less do lying lips a prince. A fool cannot speak excellently. From the way people speak, we see excellence in them. You must understand the place of excellence. Hallelujah. At the beautiful gate. 
There are so many of us today who are single because we don't know what excellence is. You don't know what excellence is. Can I say this to you? Somebody can be very well dressed and neat and all that. But by the time the person opens her mouth. So excellence is in totality. Your speaking, your appearance, your associations, your contributions to matter. Excellence in words. Excellence in mentality. Daniel was preferred. So excellence excellence makes you prefer excellence sets you at a precedence when a man is i asked a question one time amen amen no matter your expertise excellence if somebody's an artist and the person is a singer and they give you five minutes and you do very well you're a powerful singer in an event or an occasion and there's a there's a there's a, um, a timer and they give five minutes, and you go into five minutes, 30 seconds, you automatically disqualify. Why? Because you lack excellence. You are talented. That ability to keep to time excellence. That ability to keep to time. You must understand the place of excellence. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Excellence. So many of us need to get you know there are men today who are in marriages and they're tired because of the appearances and the approaches of the women so dirty so dirty dirty appearance dirty language dirty attitude and you blame the devil it was the devil that opened your mouth it was the devil that opened your mouth to tell your husband that he's an idiot. But the devil will not be there to collect slap for you. You know, you, you can't stand on the fact that you cannot stand on the fact to say because your husband is a Christian, he cannot divorce you, he cannot divorce you. So you can there are many men today who are in prison, marital prison. Because the women just feel that we are Christians, we can't be divorced. So you can do whatever you like. So the men are dying. You don't understand, sir. God kills wicked women. Bad wives, God kills them by himself. A man was sending a text message to his friend and he landed on my phone. Bam! Prayer point. Number two. Talk to the Lord to kill my wife. He landed on my phone. I called him in Lagos. The bro now me you said text. So he said, Jesus. I said, who are you sending to? He told me, I called that one. That one said, we have been on the prayer for months. And the problem about bad wife is that the more you are praying, they are praying too. <laughs> bad wives, they know they die. Bad wives, they say, Holy Ghost fire. They say, back to sender. Holy Ghost, back to sender. Holy Ghost fire, back to sender. <laughs> Excellence in marriage. There is a way to address a matter even when you are hurting. And it comes out excellent. There's a way to tell your husband he's wrong with respect. Am I communicating now? With respect. My wife advises me. My wife sits me down and advises me like a child. Sit me down. But there's a way you, you sit me down. There's a way to sit me down. You can say, sit down. Eh? There's a way to sit me down. Look at your husband. Say, hey, hey, hey. Come. I won't talk to you. Sit down here. He's not going to come. That's when you pamper him to sit down. Give him his favorite right food. Will he not sit down to eat it? And he will sit down. Then you start cheapening words. You start cheapening words. You start saying what you want to say. My wife was talking to me yesterday and she started telling me something. He got to a point. I said, okay, it's okay. He said, wait, there's one more I want to tell you. She continued. I started laughing. I said, okay, are you done? He said, no, 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 there's still one more. I say, Lord, help me. She ex because once she's talking, she wants to take her time. Don't rush her. So she's talking, I'll listen. My only prayer, I always pray, God, may she not ask me, what did I say? Because that's where there's a problem. Is it not, is it, is it not to give you face? I'll give you face. As you are talking to me, I'm thinking of Malachi, Malachi Hebrews, and Galatians. And my only is that if this woman just asks me, say, what did I say? And 
God has always delivered. No, this God loves me. He has always helped me. She never asked me. <laughs> she has never asked me, what did I say? It's hard. I'll just be talking. She'll be talking. i say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two or three times she has asked me, say, what did I say last? Eh. You were saying something now. But there's a way to present it. As a man also, there's a way to address your wife. Are you following what I'm saying? That's excellence in marriage. The Bible says in Job 6, 25, how forcible a right word. No matter how anointed a man is, he's still a man. No matter how spiritual your husband is, he's still a man. He's still a man. No matter how spiritual that your husband is, speaking in tongues, he's still from Esa. Esa. No matter what, how, how prayerful that your wife really is, she's a prayer warrior. She's still from Akure. So by the time you get her angry, she tell you what. Bah! There's a way to present it. Hallelujah. Your wife preparing meal and it's so it's, it's so salty. And from your mouth, you from your mouth. Yeah. Hey, wait it be this now. River Ninja, River Benway, all these salt in those rivers don't finish for this food. Amen. You tasted it, it's salty. You say, you say, call your wife, say, come, taste this. What do you notice? I know people that are guilty, they, they, they never notice, they, they don't notice. He <laughs> said, nothing, it's sweet, it's sweet. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, very sweet, but it's a little salty. Reduce the salt. Have you passed your message? No, your mouth is so sharp. There's nothing you cannot say to your wife. Very hard. See, what kind of food? Is this, is this what I'm is this? I'm going outside to go and eat. You say nasty things. That's not excellence. Your presentation has to be excellent. Number five. Access. Access. The man was stopped at the gate. But Peter and John went into the temple. Access is a gift. Acceptance is a grace. Acceptance is a grace. Paul said, pray for me, Romans 15, 31, that I may be accepted in Jerusalem. One of the biggest problems that prophets have, most ministers have, is that they are not accepted in their hometown. Luke chapter 4, verse 24, what does he lack? He said, pro- without honor is not accepted in his hometown one of the one of the people that was blessed Luke 4 24 not 21 one of the people that was blessed by Jacob was Asha Asha got a double blessing from the father but the blessing later became a curse as his brethren began to estrain themselves from him the Bible says when Moses came and was pronouncing a blessing upon all of them, Jacob had spoken words on Asha. Moses gave a prophetic word in Deuteronomy 33 and verse 24. He said, let Asha be acceptable of his brethren. Let him be acceptable. Let him dip his foot in oil. Acceptance is a grace. The man was stopped from assessing the temple. There's a grace that comes upon the person and people like you without resistance. It's a grace. They just like you. Am I communicating? There's an acceptance, there's an anointing for acceptance that comes upon you that even your enemies will buy your product. It's a grace and anointing. They don't like you, but they don't know why they just celebrate you. Acceptance. When you are going through the spirit of rejection, there's a power fighting you. There are people that are sound, they are good, they are character sound, manners, but yet... Somebody say, I shall be accepted. Say, I shall be accepted. Say, I shall be accepted. What Mordecai endured was acceptance. Esther chapter 10, verse 3. Accepted. When you want to, be, when you want to enjoy acceptance, try to do the right thing. Keep living the right life. One day your acceptance will come. God said to Cain in Genesis 4, verse 7, if you do the right thing, will you not be accepted? When you keep doing the right thing in life, someday, your acceptance will come. 
Keep doing the right thing, no matter how long it takes. The right thing. Keep doing the right thing. No matter how long it takes. Do the right thing. Speak the right words. Go to the right places. Hang out with the right people. Be honest. Hallelujah. And when you do that, someday when your acceptance comes, it's going to be mind-blowing. Tell somebody I shall be accepted. I can't even say I shall be accepted. I shall be accepted. I shall be accepted. I'll begin to walk in the acceptance. Nations will accept me. Continents will accept me. And that shall be your portion. You shall be accepted. Access is a gift. A grace is a privilege. Access. There are so many people today, they have talents, they have callings, they have an assignment on their life. But what they lack is access. What they lack is acceptance. What they lack is acceptance. What they lack is acceptance. When a man is accepted, when a man has the spirit of acceptance, even his errors are explained away. I've told us before, the great man of God in this country was doing um, a, 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 a worldwide program that he does every year. And he said, if you're a witch, come out. People came out. Oh, we are witches. One lady came out. They asked the lady, are you a witch? She said, yes, I'm a witch for Jesus. He said, what did you say? He said, I'm a witch for Jesus. He said, you say, repeat it. He said, I'm a witch for Christ. And he said, Jesus has no witches. Gave a slap publicly. Power! He said, blasphemy! You blaspheme against Jesus? How dare you say Jesus, witches for Christ? How dare you? Call him my Jesus. One who accommodates witches. Everywhere was quiet. After I did that, he walked away. Came back after five minutes, program continued. Nobody talked. Message was going on. Nobody made reference to slap. That's acceptance. And some of Azilius people that watched it online and saw the slap constituted themselves as the concerned lawyers of Nigeria. <laughs> now they are going to sue him to court. Over 20 of them said they are going to sue him. And over 200 lawyers from his ministry said they would respond. Say, let's meet in court. That woman will tell us where she and Jesus entered contract of witchcraft. Am I communicating right now? Acceptance. Because he was accepted. Am I celebrating slap? No. But let's celebrate this. Service is going on. Not, not slap is too far. Just say one small thing. I remember one time I was speaking. I'm giving declarations. Speaking against bad leadership. I did that somewhere. I was ministering somewhere. The governor was seated. I spoke to his face. I said all I wanted to say. And I walked into my car and I zoomed off. A young pastor went with me, was looking. Say, ah, this governor couldn't even do anything. He went and was ministering on Sunday. I began to insult his landlord. Was abusing the landlord. Said all kinds of things. In the midst of the service, the landlord's children entered the church, carry him on the altar. Beat him, punch him, one teeth miss in his mouth. Yeah, that time when I was preaching somewhere, I just saw him like that. He was just looking at me. And somebody asked, why are you like that? Say, leave Papa. Leave Papa. Forget all this. He's saying, no, don't try it at home. There's a grace for acceptance. There's a grace for acceptance. There's a grace. There's a grace to be liked. And there's not, they're not a biam. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Whether they hate you, they don't like you, they, it doesn't change it. Am I talking to somebody here? It doesn't change it. There's a grace to be liked, a grace to be accepted, a grace to be celebrated, and I pray for you. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. You shall be accepted. You shall be celebrated. You shall be recommended. You shall be accepted. You shall be celebrated. You shall be recommended. Take that grace now. Take your seat. Number what? Number what? Are you sure it's six? Yes, number six. Focus. He said, look on us. Focus. Look on us. Put your eyes on your vision. Put your eyes on your goal. And you must start having a goal now. I said to us years ago that a man without a goal lives like a goat. Put your eyes on your goal. What are you living for? What are you standing for? Be focused. 
You are going to see distractions. You are going to see things that will come to shake your faith. You want to go to school? No matter the shaking, pursue it. You want to build a house? No matter the shaking, put your heart on it. Build that house. No matter the shaking, no matter what you are going through, focus on it. Pursue that dream and achieve it. Stop starting dreams and dumping them without completion. Anything you begin, pursue it and finish it. Pursue it and finish it. Have a focus. Have a focus. You are want to go to school and there's no money for your fees. Believe God, it will come. Don't accept to be a dropout because you can't pay your fees. Don't accept life until your dream is fulfilled. Don't accept what life throws to you. Take the juice you want from life. Extract the juice you want from life. You have to be focused. Pursue your dream. Know what you are living for. The reason many of us end up making mistakes is because our eyes left the goal. Our eyes left our pursuit. Our eyes left what we want to see God do in our life. Am I communicating now? There's a grace that comes when a man's eyes on the goal. Everyone can live a normal life. What makes you distinguish is the ability to set goals. How many of you know what makes a feed, a football feed, is the goalpost? Take off the goalpost, it's just a field. But once you put the goalpost, it has become what? A football field. What makes your life outstanding, what makes your life referenced is your goals. What are you living for? If I ask you now, what are you living for? It's not going to take you a minute to think. You are able to, to point out, this is what I'm living for. This is what I'm expecting. This is what I'm pursuing. You are living a life of focus. Nothing should break your focus. He said, look on us. Look on us. Focus. Tell somebody, be focused. Be focused. Be focused. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We have foreseen that we are encompassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him despised the shame and endured the cross, and now is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. Focus. The lamp of the body is the eye. Matthew 6, 22. If thy eye is single, thy body shall be full of light. In other words, if your eye is focused, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye is single, thy body shall be full of light. Give me the message translation or the TPT, the passion translation. Let's see what it says. Your eyes are windows in your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light into your entire being. If your heart, if your heart is, is unclouded, the light floods in. Focus. What is your focus? So he was telling us, how do you lay aside every weight and sin that besets you? Focus. You must have a dream. You must daily live that dream. Great men, check most of them, sometimes when they were growing up, they had things written on their wall by their bedside. When they wake up every day, they turn, they look at it and read it to themselves. And they speak to themselves. Am I talking to somebody here? But many of us, we have deep, broken focus. When focus comes, focus is the platform for life. Your focus determines who you marry. Your focus determines who is your friend. Your focus determines where you go. You dress up, you are going out. This outing, what does it contribute to your vision? What does this outing contribute to your vision? What does this outing contribute to your life? How does it add to your life? Number seven, expectation. Verse five, you see the man looked up to them expecting to receive something. What is number one? What is number one? Number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Number six, number seven, expectation. Serving God without expecting anything is charismatic affliction. Serving God without expectation is charismatic affliction. Serving God without looking forward to a testimony is personal monumental salvation. When you put yourself at a point where you are starving and denying yourself of the benefits of redemption. When you are serving this God, expect something. Expect something. When you pray, expect. 
When you wait on the Lord, expect. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. He has not called us to seek him in vain. Exodus 3 verse 21 says, And when they shall leave, they shall not leave empty. You cannot serve God and be empty handed. The God I serve is a God that pays. God is a pay master. Don't let nobody try to describe God to you as if God... You know, sometimes eh, I said something this morning. I was talking to one of my sons. I said, my greatest excitement is that nobody owns God. Nobody owns God. You know what I mean? Nobody owns him. Because the way some people talk about this God, you think they own him. They know all the errors. They know all the faults. They act like they own God. They own God. Nobody owns God. No tribe owns God. No nationality owns God. No continent owns God. God owns us all. No individual owns God. When you are following this God, live a life of expectation. You are not redeemed to reduce. Redemption is not reduction. You are not born again to suffer again. You are not born again to struggle again. Am I speaking here? Serve God with expectation. But the problem is when you expect nothing, you get nothing. When you live a life here, you expect nothing. You get, I don't know about you, but when I serve this God, I expect him to make my life beautiful. When I serve this God, I expect him to do some great things in my life. That the ears of them that hear it shall tingle. It's already happening in my life. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> it's already happening in my life. The ears of them that hear it shall tingle. God is already doing some things in our life that people are trying to describe. They can't understand. Amen. They can't understand. I heard the pastor, they said he wrote something out on media and said the people that are receiving miracle money that I'm the one crediting their account. He said, I'm the one who asked them for their account number and I'm putting money there. And I said to him, I said, if only he knows that me, when I'm praying for people for miracle money, I'm also praying for myself. He should understand that we all need this miracle money. Am I he can't understand. He can't. He can't understand. He said, it's mind blowing to them. And he said, how can you prove that from the Bible? I said, I will prove it. Jesus needed to pay tax one time. The tribute collectors came to him and said, there is no money. And Jesus said to Peter, go to the sea. You will find a fish with money in his mouth. Who put it there? So ATM has been the Bible for a long time. Jesus said, open his mouth, take out the money. So when you settle down, you are trying to analyze miracle. Analysis paralysis. You are busy analyzing what God is doing. Meanwhile, some other people are enjoying it. Am I talking to somebody here? The ears of them that yes shall tingle. So it's, it's a wonder. It's a wonder. God is a God that when you serve him and you love him, he can never put you to shame. God will bless you beyond your dream. But start living life of expectation. You are not married to so suffer. You are not living in that home to see reproach. You are not carrying your Bible to carry disgrace. Once you are born again, once you are a child of God, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You have become the choice of God. God holds, God holds you in his hand. Am I speaking to somebody here? You must get to that point where you live a life of expectation. Proverbs 23 verse 18. Surely there is an end and the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. But the problem we have is when you don't have any expectation, you end up getting nothing. There are things God, no man can do for himself. There are things hard work can never give you. Can I tell you something? Real success is when money works for you. When you sit down and it comes. There's a level you get to in life and God just opens a door for you. Stresslessly, effortlessly and begins to bless you. Am I talking to somebody here? It's very important. That's going to happen to you. When God takes you to that level of increase. The level of wealth. The level of prosperity. The level of success. Coca-Cola lost $4 million in one day. And it, it made noise. And in one week, they made over $20 billion. It didn't make noise. Success is silent. Real success is silent. Am I talking to somebody here? Money doesn't like noise. That's why they don't play music in the bank. Money doesn't like noise. They don't play music in the bank. The bank is silent. Don't shout. It's transaction. Am I talking to somebody here? So you must get to that point where you understand there's a level. That's why, please, I beg of you, allow your enemies shout and persecute you, but let your silence reply them. 
let your silence your silence of success reply them focus expect a great man said expectation